out. And some of them, they said, this one making me very nervous and very anxious. Don't use that one. This one calming me down and all this kind of stuff. So it's really what the patients chose. It's my music, but it's, it's, it's the things that resonated with them. And one, one lady uh, who had terrible Parkinson's, uh, she, every time she would dance, she felt better. So she came up to me and she said, will you write me a tango? I used to do ballroom. So I've written a tango for her, and her and her husband will come up and dance for one of the movements of the 12 Movement Suite on that evening. And uh, that was really touching to me, and the piece just flowed out of me when she just asked me to do it. So it was really written for these people in mind. So I'm putting attention on, I guess, what um, everyone knows music heals, but by putting so much attention on and focusing and getting a lot of press on it, and then having it uh, released as a DVD. And I don't know, when it streams on the internet, I've given permission since I wrote all the music and I don't have an issue with the publishing, just for it to be on YouTube forever, never to take it down, it would be a two hour show. So people can just have it whenever they want to listen, listen to. One of the next things I'll be doing uh, is making, you know how these apps are with the iPhone and the computers and all that, I'm gonna be doing an app of all my music and we're gonna be connecting with various insurance companies and health people and hospitals and everyone in the hospital will be able to you know, just earphones, just listen to this music that I've been writing. So it's not just, I have to keep running to every city to play the concert. You can reach hundreds of millions of people all around the world with this app. And uh, so I'm working on that with a company and with some uh, Israeli uh, brilliant technical inventors and all that, that technology stuff that I know nothing about. So that's about what I wanted to say about all that. I think it's maybe time to play you a little music. I've been improvising music since 14, so I never really have a show uh, planned, and I don't get <laughs> So it sort of is affected by who's in the audience. So I don't know what will totally come out of this evening. You know, if you hear some wacky stuff, look into it. <laughs> I was playing a show in Northern California 10 years ago, and I thought it was a jazz concert. And this, uh, this recording uh, uh, label that I made an album for, I did several jazz albums for them. Little did I know, I also had done one like meditation album for them. But I thought they invited me for a jazz concert, so I'm playing for this audience, and, I, and my fingers couldn't play any jazz notes. They start playing all this meditative music. And I go up to the the, the record company guy on the break, and I said, I'm real sorry, but I just see, can't seem to play any jazz tonight. I know that's what you hired me to do. He said, no, this is that audience of meditative people who bought your albums. So my thing is, uh, like, it's like a connection to the audience. So you're actually part of the, of the creation of this music. And uh, I'd like to start off with a piece I wrote in 1980, and I haven't played it for about 15 years, it's called You're One of a Kind, and uh, let's see if I remember it. <laughs> 